Simon Fishburne here coming to you from Long Island in Amityville for the Bonzo Bash Day 2, concert number 2. And we've just interviewed Danny Schuler from Biohazard and uh, we tried to hold him back, but there was a few f***ing words that came out of his mouth that were really quite f***ing unbelievable. Um, and so we want to capture as much as we can from what came out of his f***ing mouth, but there was a few f***ing words that we have to really and bleep out um, to have this interview for you. So, uh, yeah, so here he is in all his f***ing glory, Danny Shula. Simon Fishburne coming to you from Amityville at the Bonzo Bash. Bonzo Bash, bashing. Night number two for Drum Talk TV. We've got Danny Shula from Biohazard sitting here. Oh my God, thank you so much for taking the time out. <laughs> thank you. For being here. Thank you for being named Simon Fishbone. Burn. Fishburn. <laughs> I like Fishbone. It's okay. Welcome. Thank you. Now this is not far from your native grounds. We're in Long Island and you're a Brooklyn man. Born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. That's right. Yeah, awesome. I used to come to the beach out here in Long Island, you know. Going to the beach. beach. Yeah. Yeah. What shows have you seen here? In, in Long Island? Well, over the years? Jones Beach. Jones Beach. I've seen uh, quite a few shows. Okay. In, uh, Long Island over the years, but you know, mostly I was in New York, uh, uh, you know, like the city or in Brooklyn, so. Okay. A couple shows in Long Island. Yeah. Jones Beach is a great place to see a show. So Lollapalooza there the first year. Okay. That was pretty, uh, pretty intense. That was great. Yeah. Let's talk about tonight. We're yeah. at, um, this is John Bonham's birthday. It would have been his 65th birthday. Amazing. Yeah, he'd been alive. Yes. Um, so, uh, what song are you playing? I'm playing uh, Out on the Tiles from Led Zeppelin Three. Yeah. Nice. And was that your first choice? No. <laughs> Actually, Second it wasn't. Choice. It was, uh, well, we all yeah. chose three. Right. And it was kind of like um, whatever you end up with out of those three. And Out of the Towers is the one I least wanted to play. It, it's the one I wanted to hear somebody play. Ah, okay. And it's one of my favorite songs. And yeah. I love this song because it has, to me, what I feel is a lot of elements of what made John Bonham really special. You know, it's a very syncopated rhythm. It has an interesting turnaround, time signature turnaround in it, um, and, and a real like bashing, like ending intensity, you know. So for me, it represents a lot of what I love about John Bonham. But it's a difficult song, you know. And I was concerned, I was like, yeah, I love that song, but can I really play it, you know? So I'll do my best. We'll see. <laughs> so you, you, there is no easy uh, Led Zeppelin John Bonham song. True, true, true that, true yeah. that. So, so um, you were very young when you got involved, or when you heard Zeppelin? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I started playing the drums when I was about four. Okay. And um, uh, actually, I started playing the drums because my mom was watching an Elvis special. Okay. And I was like half sleeping, half like just sitting there watching it with her. And I was like, the drums, wow, that's drums? I love drums. I like drums, you know? I was like a little Must savage. Drum. What bud, no way, uh, <laughs> drum sticks, the hit, the hit, kill. <laughs> and it just went from there, you know? And I was like, yes, beat drum, so good. And um, not not long after that, uh, I uh, was introduced to Black Sabbath and uh, started listening to Black Sabbath. Through, through your my, mother? Your mother. F through my, my grandmother, no. Uh, <laughs> my neighbor, my father brought the older bad kid from down the block over to my birthday party when I turned five. And that kid brought Black Sabbath Paranoid. <laughs> you know, he was like, I'm gonna go to this kid's birthday. <laughs> and wait, wait, ruin it. You know, <laughs> so you know, picture it though. Picture it though. Like five year old kid. Right? Yeah, yeah. Picture it. Five year old kid birthday party. Everybody's been a happy birthday too. And all of a sudden, the bad kid from down the block walks in and goes, Where's your mother's record player? And I was like, It's right there in the living room. He was like, I'll be right back. And like, this is true story. And two minutes later, down. You know, Black Sabbath comes on. <laughs> Changed my life, bro. That was it. That right. was it. I told Geezer Butler that story. He thought it was funny. For me, it was the police, like uh, Stuart Copeland. My sisters were like, I've got a lot of British heritage in me. I'm from Australia. Yeah, but my parents are British. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. So, um, you know, thought I'd bring that. Um, and uh, yeah, so my sisters had this. And when I heard Stuart playing, that's. Like, I think that's what I'm relating to in terms of my experience of hearing someone 
as powerful, you know, um, and, and well, no, yeah, in his own way, of course, yeah. and and you know, doing doing uh, something totally different, but a different genre and a different year and things like that. But that's how I'm remembering. It's like when I first heard Copeland, yeah, um, and then when I first heard Bonham as well. Yeah, I mean, for me, hearing John Bonham play, like it wasn't long after that that. My, he brought over a Led Zeppelin record. You know, I mean, I already heard Led Zeppelin, but to sit there and listen to the entire live song remains the same record three times in a row when you're five years old, yeah. like this. Five. Quit play it again, play it again. What was, what was I doing when I was five? Yeah, well, uh, that's what I was doing. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it just blew me away. You know, just completely the sound of the way he hits the drums and the sound, just the, the, the rhythms and the odd things, you know. It, it was just for the time, you know, you could listen to like the Bee Gees at that time, you know? You should be dancing, yeah. With those drummers playing like. <laughs> or you could listen to fucking Bonzo, where it's like. You know? Yeah. Yeah. What a fucking animal he was. <laughs> How did people feel, like, you know, in the 60s when they were like. Yeah, let's, you know, let Ringo up. And Ringo saw was like, Fuck it. all you need is love, love. And then <laughs> and Bonzo's up there and he's like, dur, 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 you know? Fucking animal. Yeah. So I love that shit, man. That was it. And it's, that's it. The power. The fucking passion. Yeah. It's got me. Yeah, yeah. And I've been. And this is like, this is so kind of recreated shit. ever since. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And to be in a whole, like, this sort of environment with like 25. 27 other drummers that feel the same. Yeah, who are all way more that? qualified to be here than me, by the way. <laughs> you that? Come on, no, come on, get out. If you were listening to that stuff when you were five, you're qualified. Well, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I think I know it as well as anybody, but nobody really knows it that well because right. nobody can really do what he did. I mean, I've seen a million guys try to play Led Zeppelin. There's a couple guys here tonight who play Um but over the years, I've never really seen anybody play all of it really well. Yeah. And uh, it's just so difficult, you know? It's, mm -hmm. he, he elevated rock drumming and made everybody a better drummer. He really did, really did. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and the way his drum sounded was really revolutionary, you know? And his approach with the songs, I mean, he always played what was appropriate, never too much, you know? And uh, yeah, I just try to carry that attitude into my own music now and just, you know, just try to honor that, you know, that lesson. Because I, I think it's valuable. It's good to know. I, I think um, keeping the legacy of John Bonham is drumming alive is really important because I think I, I see it now like drummers, you know, the whole Pro Tools computer influence on music right now is great. It's great. You know, I, I have a Pro Tools rig. I recorded Pro Tools. But having the ability to edit your performance after the fact and change the way you play, um, you know, putting a performance on tape without ever playing it mm -hmm. kind of deal, um, I don't really love that. You know, I like when drummers sat down and just had to play it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think it's important to keep the legacy of what John Bonham did alive, to, to keep people informed of how drummers used to do it and how it's really a great way to do it, you know? A lot of kids now are learning how to play drums listening to hip hop records, you know, listening to loops. Yeah. And I did too. I mean, I'm from Brooklyn. I grew up with hip hop music too. I learned how to play drums listening to hip hop too. But it's a it's a different kind of thing. You know, you have to have it all, you know what I mean? So I'm just happy to be here. Cool. So excellent. And and, and John was pretty much self taught, uh, as we know, and uh, he had like a, a fascination or an interest in jazz music and, and, and other styles of music. Mm. What other stuff influences you? Apart from hip hop. Well, when I was a little kid, I, I used to really be into big band jazz. Okay. I used to really love, one of my heroes was Buddy Rich. Yeah. And uh, it's funny, I had a funny story. When I was a kid, when I was about 14 years old, um, me and my friends, my, my friend stole his mother's car and we drove from Brooklyn to uh, Greenwich Village, Lower East Side. And we were hanging around, walking around with Bleaker Bob's, which is a record store down there. Yeah. And um, we were passing uh, a jazz club, Blue Note. Yep. And um, it was a big, yeah, man. It's, there was a big tour bus parked outside, and on it it said the Buddy Rich Band. And my friends like, Danny, look, look who's here tonight. And I was like, Holy shit, is he playing right now? We gotta get in it. But we weren't old enough to go inside. 
So anyway, the show was over. So as I'm like turning to look, who comes walking out of the club with his robe on, with his bodyguard, <laughs> right. but fuck, bloody rich. So I was like, eh. but you know, like so they were like, move it, kid, you know. <laughs> and uh, he got on his bus. So my friend, he stole his mother's car, was like, let's get in the car, we'll follow the bus, we'll, wherever they go, we'll just go. I was like, yeah, okay, let's go. And we just jumped in the car and followed them to Midtown Manhattan until they stopped in front of some fancy <laughs> hotel. And the minute the bus stopped, I jumped out, ran to the bus door and knocked on the door. And I was like, hey, hey, Mr. Rich, Mr. Rich. And the bus driver opened the door and he was like, get the fuck away from this bus right now. And I was like, sorry. And then I heard a voice from inside the bus, like, what's going on up there? And it was Buddy. And he came out, and I was like, Mr. Rich, I'm sorry, I don't want to bother you. It was like late at night, you know, he was tired, he was getting home. And I was like, but I'm a huge fan, and I just want to, I just want to say hello. I don't know, I just saw you walk out of the club, and me and my friends are here, and I just freaked out, and I just had to get you, yeah. you know? And he walks out of the bus, he's got, he still got the robe on, and he walks over and he goes, what's your name? And I told him my name. And he goes, you play the drums? And he said, yeah, I play the drums. And he, he whispers something in his, in his bodyguard's ear. The guy goes inside, comes back out, and gives me the pair of sticks that Buddy was holding in wow. his hand when he walked out of the club, right? Hands me the drumsticks, and then Buddy signs an autograph for me, and he shakes my hand, and he goes, here you go, kid. Have a good day. And that was it. It's my Buddy Rich story. That's awesome, Buddy Rich awesome. story. Wow, man. Yeah, it was awesome. I still have it because I still have the stick and the you know, yeah. 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 Two games, but it was very cool. And how old were you? Uh, I was probably 14 or 15. Wow. wow. Never never saw Led Zeppelin though. I never got to right. see uh, Led yeah. Zeppelin. I was too yeah. little. Yeah. Now. yeah. I remember uh, I remember 1977 when they were playing Madison Square Garden. And I remember some of the older kids in my neighborhood, they were all going. Yeah. Right. Right. Led Zeppelin was a phenomenon. Yeah. And everybody went. Yeah. You know, the whole city yeah. stopped. And uh, like everybody under like 25 was like, oh, we're we're going, you know. But uh, yeah, seven or eight years old, I could I never get to see him play like that. But I mean, I've watched every bootleg video, and listened to every bootleg recording I could find. Yeah. Cool, you know. Yeah, man. man. And that comes out, and you're playing. Other people notice that as well. Like how much of that that is influence on you? Know, what you do say for like biohazard? <laughs> Well, you know, Biohazard is kind of like a uh, hardcore punk metal kind of hybrid thing, and um, I, but I, I, but I do think that it, that that uh, the uh, the influence of of John Bonham comes through a little bit in some of the things that we do. You know, I, I mean, there's definitely a million things I've stolen right. from you know Led Zeppelin and, and kind of integrated into what we do. Um, so it's the technical stuff, but there's also the spirit and the and, and, and what, what sure. he, he means to each one of us, I guess. The same with Buddy, you know, like, we may not play like Buddy, we might not play his licks or whatever, right. but if we've seen him, then we, we you know, we, we imagine ourselves, like, in that position, we, we channel that, and absolutely, and that's fun. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, man, you go up there with that spirit of, of what these guys do. I mean, you know, they, <clears throat> they show us how to play, you know? Bonzo, like listening to him, I can only picture the energy he was putting into what he was doing and and, and like the enthusiasm of what he did always yeah. spoke to me, you yeah. know. I just, yeah. But it's just so really emphasized as well. Like yeah. it was just like he had super this, smooth. But yeah, just like an energetic yeah. explosion of yeah. of style, you know. Mm -hmm. That was fucking dope, man. He was incredible. Nobody plays the drums like that. Now. I mean, yeah. even now, all these years later, I'm sitting here. <clears throat> you know, over the past two weeks, learning a Led Zeppelin song to play at this thing, and in the course of doing that, I'm listening to like 20 other Led Zeppelin songs too, and just playing along in my little studio. And I, I realized the other day, I was like, man, I've been listening to and playing this shit since I'm five years old, and I still can't do it right. You know, it's, I still can't get it right. The guy was so far ahead of his time. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. And that's what we're celebrating. That's exactly what we're yeah. Something, yeah. something special. Um, so what what are you up to apart from biohazard? What do you, what else are you doing? Are you uh, you know what's going on for you? What what can we look forward to um, seeing from you in the next six months or a uh, year? Well, it's it's all biohazard stuff, okay. really. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be on the road. We leave in like three weeks. Um, <clears throat> we're going up to Canada playing some shows, and uh, then July and August we'll be in Europe playing festivals and stuff, and South America again at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, another record. 
You know, that's it. Got my family at home. I live in New Jersey now. I just do my thing, man. Play a little music, do my thing at home. That's it. Dang. Stay happy. Cool, know? man. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think we're done. I think we're done. We've had a great time. So, um, look, we'd love to interview you again and uh, Anytime. get a like, full, full, full interview and go into depth and stuff like that. Because I can tell we could just talk later. Oh, yeah, we could go. We I could go. go. But um, talk, you're going. you got to go. So, i got to go. Danny, thank you so much. My pleasure, brother. Uh, take care. For yes. Talk TV. Out.